It was the best of times, it was the worst of times. That's actually true in 1982. What is considered to be one of the worst video games of all time is released this year. But let's prep ourselves for that storm that's about to rain down. How about we tunnel down into the earth to get ready? We'll do just that in Dig Dug, first released in April 1982. Dig Dug was developed and published by Namco in Japan, and published by Atari everywhere else. In Dig Dug, you must tunnel beneath the ground to get rid of the monsters that lie beneath. To get rid of them, you blow them up with your pump. It's actually quite a violent concept. You can also just crush them with a falling rock. Supposedly, the playable character in Dig Dug is named Tezo Hori, and is the father of the main character of Mr. Driller. Dig Dug was a popular game, as such it was ported to a wide variety of home consoles like the Atari 2600, 5200, and 7200, the Game Boy, and even more recent consoles like the Xbox 360. Despite the game's popularity, it was named the fourth worst Atari game of 1983 in St. Game Magazine. Surprisingly, the bad game I hinted at earlier wasn't even number one. That honor belonged to Congo Bongo. Donkey Kong Jr. was released in August 1982 by Nintendo. Donkey Kong Jr. reverses the roles of the characters from Donkey Kong. Donkey Kong is now the victim, having been captured by Mario, and it's up to DK Jr. to rescue his father. This is one of the few games where Mario was actually the villain. The gameplay is very similar to the original Donkey Kong, only the stages now have vines to climb and actual enemies to avoid. Like Donkey Kong, Donkey Kong Jr. was a wild success, even spawning a serial based on the game. ArcadeMuseum.com named it one of the top 100 games of all time. In November 1982, Atari would release their Atari 5200 Super System home console. It was intended to compete with Mattel's Intellivision, but it ended up competing more with Coleco's ColecoVision, which was released the same year. The internals of the 5200 are similar to the 2600, but it is a bit more powerful. That didn't help the system, because the 5200 controller was a disaster. The design of the controller was not great, it would sometimes not center correctly, and I'm sure you can see how that'd be annoying. The controller itself was also a bit complex. It had an analog stick, a number pad, side buttons, a pause button, and a reset button. The 5200 didn't sell as well as the 2600 did. The 5200 was criticized for not being able to play Atari 2600 games at launch, and quite a few games were updated 2600 games. It didn't help that Atari kept making a lot of the games for the Atari 2600. The Atari 5200 sold around 1 million units before it was discontinued. As I mentioned, the ColecoVision was released in August 1982 and included Donkey Kong. The ColecoVision was praised for its power, allowing games to be much closer to their arcade counterparts than other systems could achieve. The system would sell well, selling over 2 million units by the time it was discontinued in 1985, surely due to its inclusion of Donkey Kong. In the fall of 1982, Namco revolutionized the racing genre with Pole Position. In Pole Position, you drive a Formula One car from a third-person perspective in a race against seven other computer-controlled players. Pole Position was actually the first racing game to have a racetrack based on a real track. It was also one of the first games to feature product placement, having billboards for various products and games like Pepsi and Centipede. And for whatever reason, there was a TV show based on Pole Position. Pole Position was met with widespread acclaim from fans and reviewers alike, with reviewers praising the game's graphics, gameplay, and realism, if you can believe that. Pole Position will become one of the highest grossing arcade games in America in 1983, selling over 20,000 units. Next up, Cubert, created by Gottlieb and first released in October 1982. In Cubert, you play as Cubert, with your goal being to change every color on a pyramid by jumping on the spots. You start at the top of the pyramid and hop from cube to cube, trying to change the color of all 28 cubes while avoiding enemies. Warren Davis and Jeff Lee came up with the foundational idea for Cubert. The idea was inspired in part by the paintings of M.C. Escher. Cubert was well received upon release and would go on to be one of the most well known video games of the early 80s. According to Stephen Kent's Ultimate History of Video Games book, Cubert sold around 25,000 units. Namco released another Pac Man game this year, Super Pac Man, released in August 1982 in Japan and October 1982 in North America. Instead of collecting dots to clear the level, the player must collect keys to open doors and eat all the fruit. Once all the fruit is eaten, the player moves to the next level. Pac-Man can turn into Super Pac-Man if he eats a super pellet, allowing him to move faster, touch ghosts without dying, and go through doors without keys, in addition to being much larger. The game was not the success that Pac-Man and Miss Pac-Man were. Utopia was released in Europe in 1982. Utopia was a game designed by Don Daglow for the Intellivision. 
In Utopia, you control an island and must accumulate points by creating buildings like hospitals and schools. You must keep the people on your island happy or they will rebel against you. Buildings and other activities cost money, which is generated when it rains on your crops or when your people in boats catch fish. Utopia laid the foundation for all real-time strategy games to follow, in addition to being called one of the first city simulation games. In December 1982, Namco released Exevius in Japan. It wouldn't be released in North America until January 1983. Exevius wasn't the first vertically scrolling shooter, but it did set the standard for the genre and kickstarted it as well. In Exevius, you pilot the Salvalu, a fighter plane armed with a forward firing zapper and a blaster. The game features 16 different stages or areas, with you starting back at stage 7 after beating the 16th stage. The story of Exevius isn't anything special. You fight for mankind against the biocomputer GAMP, which stands for General Artificial Matrix Producer. Exevius was praised for its graphics, which were quite revolutionary at the time. In April 1982, Activision released Pitfall for the Atari 2600. In Pitfall, you play as Pitfall Harry, with your goal being to get through the jungle while collecting rare treasures and avoiding obstacles like pits, hence the name. Other obstacles include quicksand, fire, and crocodiles. You have 3 lives and 20 minutes to collect all 32 pieces of treasure. If you don't collect all the treasure, run out of lives, or run out of time, the game ends. The game was well received and sold as such. According to Racing the Beam, the Atari video computer system, by Ian Bogust and Nick Monford, Pitfall was the best selling video game for well over a year. Pitfall also featured Jack Black in his first television appearance in a commercial for the game. He was 13 years old at the time. And now the moment you've all been waiting for. What is perhaps the worst game of all time has arrived. The game, based on E.T. the Extraterrestrial, was released on the Atari 2600 in December 1982. In the game, you control E.T. who needs to collect three pieces of a phone to let him phone home. The game was designed by Howard Warshaw, who was given less than six weeks to code the entire game in order to release it in time to be sold during the Christmas season. As history would prove, the game was perhaps the biggest gaming failure and one of the worst games ever made. The game is commonly cited as a cause of 1983's video game crash. What's sad is that the game sold over 1.5 million copies. So many children had to receive that playable abomination as a Christmas present. Despite the amount of copies that were sold, almost 4 million copies were produced because Atari was sure it was going to be a hit. Over 700,000 copies of the game would eventually be buried in a landfill in New Mexico. Other games like Joust, Burger Time, and Ultima 2 The Legend of the Enchantress were released this year too, but there's only so many games that I can cover in one video. And that takes us to the end of 1982. Next year starts the video game crash of 1983, and it's going to be glorious. Thank you for watching this part of the history of video games. If you enjoyed the video or learned anything, leave a like. If you didn't like the video or didn't learn anything, leave a dislike. Follow me on Twitter at MittenSquad. My name is Paul of Mitten Squad. Have a wonderful day.